Okay. Primary air pollutants. Fun stuff, right? All right, let's get to it. Carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen monoxide, carbon dioxide, particulates, and hydrocarbons. So particulate matter, okay, the source, it's like burning fossil fuels and car exhaust. Um, not only that, but just any anything that even you could see flies through the air, this kind of stuff, you know, you're going to see a lot of particulates in the air. Now the effect, it reduces the visibility, reduces your visibility and produces respiratory irritation. Now to reduce this problem, you can either filter it, use electrostatic precipitators, and you, you can use alternative energy that does not cause particulate matter to be um, dispersed. So nitrogen oxides, they're emitted from auto exhaust. It also promotes the acid, acidification of lakes through acid deposition um, and causes respiratory irritation and leads to smog and ozone. So the only way to reduce this is through a catalytic converter and you can see equation down there if you need it. Okay, sulfur oxides. Source, coal burning. You, um, the effects are acid deposition, respiratory irritation, <laughs> like always, and it also damages plants um, through acid deposition. So to reduce this, you can use scrubbers or you can burn low sulfur fuel. And yet again, there is the equation if you need it. SO2 plus sulfur dioxide plus oxide equals uh, SO3 plus water equals H2SO4. Okay, carbon oxides. The source is auto exhaust and incomplete combustion. Of, okay, this is this is bad, so make sure you pay attention. Effects CO binds to hemoglobin reducing reducing the blood's ability to carry oxygen and CO2 contributes to global warming. Global warming, you know, the 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 earth getting hotter because um, the greenhouse gases are trapping allow, allowing more heat into the earth. Um, the, you can reduce this by using catalytic converters, emission test testing, oxygenated fuel, and by using mass transit, burning burning oxygenated fuel. Okay. So with ozone, um, the effects are it's, it it uh, irritates the respiratory your your respiratory system and causes plant damage. So to reduce this, you reduce NO emissions and VOCs. Okay, radon. Um, radon is a radioactive gas, and it's formed from the decay of uranium, and it causes lung cancer, and it also is a problem in the reading prong. Radon. So photochemical smog is formed by chemical reactions involving sunlight, um, such as nitrous oxide, VOCs, and oxygen. Acid deposition is caused by sulfuric and nitric acid, resulting in lowered pH of surface waters. So if you if and there's a, if there's a place with a lot of acid deposition, fish generally like you know a natural pH, which is around seven. But if that goes down, that causes not only fish, but other aquatic life and plants to die. So acid deposition is never good. Um, and remember, sulfur, sulfuric and nitric acids, you know, in the air from um, some non-point and point sources in the air can create um, acid deposition. Now the greenhouse gases. Some examples, you might have water vapor, CO2, ozone, which is O3, methane, CH4, and CFCs, which CFCs were banned by the Montreal Protocol. So those are not as much in it. Um, yeah.
So the effect of the greenhouse gas, the greenhouse effect, is they trap outgoing infrared heat energy, causing the Earth to warm. So the more there are, the, the more uh, these element compounds that are in the air, uh, you get a warmer Earth. So, the effects of global warming. There's a rising sea level, extreme weather, droughts, and extinctions of species. Ozone depletion is caused by CFCs, methyl chloroform, carbon te tetrachloride, halon, methyl bromide, and remember that all of which attack the stratospheric ozone layer. Ozone in the troposphere, which... Oh, troposphere which we are in where weather happens is not the same ozone that affects you know the ozone layer as in the ozone hole that we know about um, which is in the stratospheric layer which is a lot higher so love canal in new york was when chemicals were buried in an old canal um, and later schools and homes were built on top of it causing birth defects and cancer so love canal nothing to do with love just it's just not good it caused birth defects and cancer so municipal solid waste is mostly paper and most of it is land filled instead of recycled so the true costs or the external costs um, are things that are harmful environmental side effects that are not reflected in the product price so <sighs> I remember the days, $1.55 for some shell gas. I'd sure love that today. But um, if you think about it back then, even though you had such a low price for gas, it's not putting into effect um, how um, burning, you know, finding this gas and this kind of stuff is actually hurting the environment. So, and also if you look at your electric gas bill, it may not be that high, but if you think about it, when you burn coal to make electricity, there's a lot of um, CO2 emitted from there, which is contributing to the greenhouse effect and global warming. And those, the prices that you would have to pay to, you know, pay for them to clean and all this kind of stuff, not all of them do. So that would be a really high price. So this is an external cost, not necessarily reflected in the product price. Now, sanitary landfill problems and solutions. A leachate is a liner with a collection system. Methane gas collects gas and burns it. And for the volume of garbage, you need to compact and reduce it. So the incineration advantages and disadvantages. The advantages are that the volume of waste would be reduced by 90% and the waste heat could be used for more energy um, through cogeneration. Now, toxic, the, okay, here are the disadvantages. Toxic emissions contain polyvinyl chloride, chloride which is a dioxin. Scrubbers and electric static per precipitators will be needed, which can be expensive, and ash disposal contains heavy metals. So that ends part three of the AP review.